Welcome to Retain, Revise, or Retire. I am your host, Michael Young, and today we're going to be looking at four hymns, numbers 7 through 10 in the 1985 hymn book. I hope you're all having a good time with the 13 new hymns. They promised a dozen. They gave us a baker's dozen. How cool is that? <laughs> Throw in an extra one for good measure. Maybe it was like a last minute decision. I don't know but there were 13. Anyway, let's jump right into these. Uh, some other good ones. These uh, ones at the beginning are all, all in uh, the category of being restoration hymns. So that that, that by itself, I think, gives it a, a little bit of a leg up where a lot of these things being specifically about the restoration, it's nice to keep them in because there are a lot of songs that are not falling under that category of being restoration hymns. And I think that makes it just a little bit harder um, to keep them in, if that makes sense. All right, so before we get started today, I want to go over the uh, the five criteria that the, the hymn book committee gave when they're looking at the new hymns right? and also looking at which hymns should be retained. So they gave these five criteria, and, I, and I've got them listed here on the screen. They are to increase faith and worship of Heavenly Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. A pretty fundamental one there. Teach the core doctrine of the gospel with power and clarity. See, I, I think there are a lot of hymns that kind of get you riled up and like, oh, that's exciting or, oh, that's is go <laughs> restoration. But uh, they may not teach the uh, actual doctrine. And we'll, you know, I'm sure we'll run across that as we go through this series. Invite joy, joyful singing at home and at church. And I think this one means they need to be approachable. They, we're not going to sing a song at home that is really difficult to sing. Uh, that it doesn't have a, an approachable melody. It doesn't have words that are approachable. It needs to be able to use, be used both at home and at church. So, I mean, their whole collection now is called Hymns for for Home and Church, right? That, that seems like that's a pretty big emphasis they're putting on there. Um, especially also that, that jives really well with the uh, home-centered, uh, home church-supported direction that the church has been going. So, you know, you want to be able to sing both at home and at church. Then we have Comfort the Weary and Inspire Members to Endure in Faith. That's great. There's some uh, hymns that are specifically really, really strong at that point. So even uh, maybe if they're not as strong at number two, teaching specific doctrines, they could be really strong with number four. Or comfort the weary and inspire members to endure in faith. And then finally, unify members throughout the church. Now, this is an interesting one because it's a, now it's a global hymn book now. They're trying to make it a global collection. And I think this is the this one's going to eliminate some things that are a little bit too region specific, maybe even a little bit too Utah specific <laughs> in our um, 1985 hymn book. So we'll surely run across some of those too. Anyway, without further ado, let's look at seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, so number seven, we have Israel, Israel, God is calling. Israel, Israel, God is calling, calling thee from lands of woe. Babylon the great is falling, God shall all her towers overthrow. Started that one a little bit too low. <laughs> well, anyway, um, I really like this one. I like the... Um, Kind of the, the emphasis about the gathering of Israel. I think that's a really, really strong emphasis in the church right now. I know President Nelson has made that kind of one of the hallmarks of his presidency is talking about gathering Israel, being on the Lord's youth battalion to gather Israel and such. And it, you know, it kind of it highlights both the, the great and the terrible of the day of the Lord. Like, you know, the evil is going to be overthrown, but come to Zion and find safety. I think that is a really timely message. And I think that this song um, endures, um, I think, into the next hymn book. I say I, I like the, the tune, too. It's really, it's a very singable tune. It's a very memorable tune. So this one, I 
is just an easy retain. Definitely going to retain that one. All right, number eight. My computer will load. Fun. Okay, so the, these next ones are maybe not as well known. I know a couple of these because, <laughs> honestly, we've used them in the Tabernacle Choir as the sign-on for conference. Like, you, um, you, you start the feed and you hear Lloyd Newell be, this is the something such and such general conference of the... Uh, Lloyd Newell, that is. <laughs> Uh, does those vo has done those voiceovers uh, and then the choir singing something in the background that's the sign on him and so a lot of these these next ones uh, I've done a lot as sign on hymns but I haven't really done them as much in sacrament meetings or really any meetings for that matter so hmm, that might be kind of a strike against it but anyway, this one, Awake and Arise. Awake and arise, all ye slumbering nations. The heavens have opened their portals again. See, so that, uh, it's got a really great tune. Um, it, it does this really nice thing where the, the, um, the, the next two lines are getting, uh, like, it gets to this note, and then it goes up to that note in the next measure, into that one, and then finally the has burst, like has this high note, and it's really pretty. Though, um, I will say, it is a little bit high. <laughs> uh, like, uh, I guess it goes up to an E, high E flat. I think a lot of congregational singers maybe not, maybe not like that all that much. Um, gosh, I really like this one, though. It's another one of those good, um, restoration ones that talks about dispensations which is i think a a, a cool thing that we don't talk uh, enough about yeah i'm gonna say maybe revise on this one where we say okay i i like the song i like the the tune but maybe even just tweaking it and putting it in a different key maybe a little bit lower I think would be a good call on that one. All right. That's number eight. Let's look at number nine. Okay. Number nine is Come Rejoice. And this one's interesting. Um, at the very beginning of it, it's marked unison. So you're not supposed to sing this one in harmony. Which is interesting because most, you know, most hymns are um, meant to be sang SATB throughout. But yeah, you look at this one and it's got like bigger chords. So it's more like just an accompaniment that you're just supposed to sing unison, which I don't love for congregational singing. I mean, uh, you could sing any song, you know, just in, in unison, you know, uh, but not having the option to sing it in harmony. Hmm, I don't like that. Um, it's not a bad song, though. Uh, Come rejoice, the King of glory speaks to earth again. Gladsome words ring out from heaven, joyous, wondrous strain. And it's got this kind of cool bass line. Boom, 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 boom. You know, like, it, it's, it's kind of jaunty. Oh... This is a hard one. I'm kind of on the fence about this one. Because, um, I don't know, we, like we said, we've already gotten several other good restoration hymns. I don't know that this one adds a lot to what's already been said. You know what? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say revise. And I'm going to revise two things on this one. The first is I would create a version that uh, at least has some harmony to it. Um, I, I don't like just only having unison. Uh, and second, I don't know. I would maybe just I maybe just tweak the words. Even add another verse. I've only got three verses. Uh, just adding something that that's more um, specific to the restoration. 
have, I don't know, there, there are a few things, but I don't know. I feel like it could be expanded a little bit more. There's some things that are kind of just generic. Um, like the second verse does really well with angels, messengers from heaven come to earth once more. Bring to men the glorious gospel, priceless truths restore. Fantastic. That sounds like a restoration hymn. The third, third verse, though, it's great words, but it doesn't sound specifically like a restoration hymn. Like, great, O oh great, is Christ our Savior, none can stay his hand. Now he brings to us salvation, cheering every land. Sing, rejoice, the King of love speaks to earth from heaven above. See, I, <laughs> little pet peeve of mine. Um, love and above. <laughs> it's a very overused um, uh, rhyming couplet. And once you know to look for it, you'll see it everywhere. I wonder how many there are in the hymn book. That'd be kind of a fun video. Like, let's count all the loves and aboves in the hymn book. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to say revised. I mean, this one could use a little a little uh, sprucing up, but still basically a good song. Okay, finally, number 10. Come sing to the Lord. Come sing to the Lord his name, his name to praise. Um, hmm. I don't know. I don't know this one very well. And it's got one of those where the, the men cut out in the third line for not really any apparent reason. Uh, where it's, it's just the sisters. Also quite high. It's as high as that last one. Um, bonus points that was written by Garrett de Young Jr. That's who the uh, the De Jong Concert Hall was named after at BYU. Well, well, and it still existed. That got torn down. Sadly, I missed that. Um, I don't know. This one to me doesn't doesn't do enough to stand out among the other Restoration hymns. It's got the the part where the men cut out. I don't love the melody. I don't know. I I just think it, it doesn't do enough to stand out. And I think there are other um, brand new hymns that are being written that could um, come in and take the place of this one. So this one I'm going to say, retire. All right. There you have it. Those are today's cho um, choices. You know, got to retire some of them. I think if they're not being used all that much, uh, you know, the, the church isn't going to delete them from the internet. You know, they're still going to be available. I just think... Um, let's let's win let's uh, whittle it down and let, put in some some new options i think because you think uh every time you retain something from the old book it, it possibly takes a slot from something that could be new and you know there are i i say there are a lot of the, these old hymns that i think we need to retain or just tweak a little bit and put in but i don't know interesting i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments it's, uh agree with me don't agree with me great you know i this is just for fun i i love to hear and make this a conversation all right till next time keep singing